Okay. So, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm Shireen, and I'm going to be taking you through uh, this presentation um, to really talk to you about what hypnobirthing is. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard of the term hypnobirthing. Some of you may have um, read up on it uh, or even signed up to a, a, a program, an, an online program perhaps, or have just read uh, a hypnobirthing book. Uh, and some of you may have just heard of it, but really haven't looked into what it is. So my aim for today is to take you through really the concept behind hypnobirthing, because there can be a lot of misconceptions when it comes to this practice. I sure had a lot of misconceptions in my time when um, just before I enrolled myself in a hypnobirthing program uh, with my third pregnancy. So um, we're gonna go into what hypnobirthing is. Um, and hopefully once you leave today, you have a good understanding of how it works. Um, and um, yeah, and I hope that you decide to use it for your, uh, the rest of your pregnancy and for your labor and birth. Okay, so hypnobirthing is also um, one of the, one of the uh, let's say, main or common misconceptions about hypnobirthing is that it's hippie practice. It's just this kind of very strange kind of voodoo uh, <laughs> practice that only hippie people practice where they're zen-like and they're all into yoga. Uh, well, let me tell you, that's not exactly what it is because I was never that kind of a person. But uh, what it is, is that it is actually an accredited, uh, recognized antenatal program, at least the program that I teach, the Wise Hippo, the, you can see the logo down there. It's actually an antenatal program that is certified by the Royal College of Midwives. So actually there's a lot of midwives in the UK that actually teach the Wise Hippo birthing program. Um, okay. So a little background about myself in case you don't know who I am. I, um, I'm Shireen, I'm a birth doula um, and a birth coach and I'm also a doula mentor. Um, I'm a childbirth educator and I'm a hypnobirthing specialist um, and I'm also a breastfeeding counselor. So uh, you probably came to this through my Facebook or Instagram, which is Belly Baby Mom, that's my brand. We also actually, um, so I run a collective of eight other birth and parenting professionals who do various support services from lactation consultancy to postnatal doula services, uh, baby wearing, uh, baby massage and so on. So if you found yourself wanting to know more about what kind of support services we offer, uh, to pregnant women or couples and new moms, uh, I would invite you to head over to my website for that, which is bellybabymom.com. Okay, of course, these are my three little ones. This is a pretty old picture, but, um, and you might actually hear them in the background at some point today. So what can you expect from tonight's tonight's session. So we're going to talk about, about what is hypnobirthing, the concept, why we actually need to learn how to birth. It's quite crazy that we actually need to go, you know, when you really think about it, you know, why do we actually need to go to antenatal classes or sessions such as these, you know, sometimes we over obsess about the whole birth situation that we're going to uh, come across or have to experience. Um, at some point. So uh, we're going to talk about that. Why does pain and fear or what does pain and fear have to do with it? So a lot of the times when people hear of hypnobirthing or come across um, this kind of practice, uh, what they do hear about it is that, oh, that's the practice where you can have a completely pain-free birth. Well, we will talk about that. Uh, and fear. So sometimes people also hear that with hypnobirthing, you can actually have a very confident birth and you can remove a lot of the fear. 
And of course, we're going to delve into that. So these two aspects um, that usually surround birth, pain and fear, have very much a lot to do with the hypnobirthing practice. And then we're gonna talk about and also practice some breathing and relaxation tools. And then towards the end, I'm gonna share with you a super saver deal. And then as mentioned, uh, is gonna be time for Q and A in case you have any questions after the session. I see more people have joined us. So welcome, thank you so much for being here. I did mention previously, um, it seems that a lot of people like to put their videos off. I would recommend putting your mics off, obviously, just so everybody can hear me clearly. Um, at some point, I would love if I can see everyone, maybe towards the end at the Q&A. I would love for that. So you still have a little bit time to get yourself ready. <laughs> ready. Um, but anyway, for now, um, Feel free, like I said, I'd love to see your faces or not. It's completely up to you. Uh, and you have the chat column. So if you have any questions, drop them in there and we'll go through them right at the end, okay? All right, so what kind of birth experience do you wish to achieve? All right, so every time I start any hypnobirthing class or a session such as this, this is usually the first question I like to ask. It is such an important question that we ask ourselves because believe it or not, working with many pregnant women uh, in the last five or six years, uh, sometimes we're so overwhelmed with what um, everyone else is doing and how everyone else is preparing that we actually forget to ask ourselves what we really uh, are looking for when it comes to our birth experience. Um, everyone's preferences, expectations, uh, wishes, and plans are very different from one another, okay? And, um, and the experience that you would wish for yourself can be very different, obviously, than what your friend, your mother experienced, what you see on TV, and so on and so forth. So it's actually really important to ask, to give yourself some time and ask yourself, what is that birth experience that you wish to achieve, whatever that may be. And that can look like any of these things that you see right here in front of you. These are all different preferences that a lot of people aim for or work towards. If you look closely, you'll see that not all of them are, you know, that natural vaginal birth that a lot of people associate with hypnobirthing practice, right? So I will say that most people who do, um, who do uh, go ahead and sign up for a hypnobirthing course are looking towards achieving um, that natural vaginal birth, non-medicated birth. However, not everyone. And I, I feel very strongly about, um, about you know, the, the, the essence where, a lot, where some people feel that hypnobirthing only suits those kind of people that have those very particular uh, wishes and preferences. Um, because hypnobirthing, um, actually, it's not something that you, uh, it's not like a, a check, uh, a checkbox that you kind of just tick and say, yes, I hypnobirthed. It is more than that. It's about all the tools and techniques that you use uh, and that will help you for whatever kind of a birth experience you end up having. Okay. So hypnobirthing practice can work for an induced birth, um, V-backs, uh, water birth, uh, vaginal, uh, medicated, unmedicated, cesarean, okay? And uh, it's really, really important to remember that, okay? This is a, a really interesting uh, image. I wish you could see it in more detail. Uh, if you look closely, you'll see all kinds of birth uh, positions, birth experiences, um, and this just, is, you know, it's a simple visual just to go, uh, just to, to let you know, or to tell you that, you know what, everybody will really have different expectations and, and different experiences for their birth. And it's all okay. There is no right or wrong. 
the one thing that you will achieve with hypnobirthing provided you follow through, you do all the practice of the techniques and tools that you do learn in hypnobirthing is that you come out of it feeling positive. Okay, so a, you must have heard of people referring to an experience as a positive birth experience. I'm very, uh, I feel very strongly about that uh, because, you know, a positive experience or a birth experience doesn't have to be uh, very specific. It does not have to be uh, or does not have to happen in a very particular way. Uh, someone could have a cesarean birth that's very positive. Somebody else could have an induced birth. That's very positive. You can have an epidural and have a very positive birth experience. Uh, it's much more than that. It's much more than achieving the specific goals that you set for yourself. And that sometimes can be a little bit dangerous, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, it's about you know meeting those expectations that you set for yourself. So, so we do need to allow um, ourselves some flexibility while still having some common, uh, you know, some goals and some um, some preferences, which is why I typically like to stay away from the word birth plan. I do like to refer to it as a birth preference. So the wise hippo uh, or hypnobirthing ethos, it teaches you the skills and knowledge to enable you to trust yourself uh, and trust your instincts and make well-informed decisions. The goal is for you to achieve the right birth on the day. And this is what I was referring to. You know, there is no right or wrong birth, uh, but the birth experience that you achieve is what was, you know, it was the right birth for you and for your baby and for your family. Hypnobirthing does focus on birth being a normal event uh, and hypnobirthing can help you achieve the birth that you want. But like I mentioned, sometimes life throws a curveball, and this is where the beauty of practicing hypnobirthing techniques comes in. Is like I mentioned before, the techniques you learn, such as, for example, breathing techniques, uh, will help you even if you have, especially actually, if you have an induced birth, because we know those contractions and surges can be much more powerful. Uh, or if you have a cesarean, a lot of people feel very anxious if their labor ends up in a cesarean section. So you want to have some tools with you if that happens so that you can be a little bit more relaxed, breathe through everything, the whole experience. And that is one way of turning, you know, a, uh, you know, um, an experience that wasn't um, expected into one that is positive. Uh, one of my favorite sentences um, that is very special to me is a positive birth experience is a state of mind and it's not defined by what happens during labor and birth, but by how a woman feels about her baby's birth. Um, this stayed with me for a long time. Uh, and I wanna take you through you know, a little bit about my own birth experience with uh, hypnobirthing and specifically with the wise hippo. Um, so I have three children, right? Uh, 12 year old, a nine year old and a five year old. Um, who keep me very, very busy. Um, and I actually had two cesareans. My first two were born uh, by a cesarean section. When it was time to have my third or when I was pregnant with my third, I thought I wanted a different kind of birth experience. And that was because by the time I became pregnant, I realized that my first two cesareans were unnecessarians, okay? Um, and that's a lovely term I, I always love to use. They're pretty unnecessary. Um, and I won't go into details on that. But the point is, I really thought, you know what, I really want to try for a normal, natural, vaginal birth this time around. Obviously, it was really hard to find that, you know, support from a doctor who supported me with that choice and a hospital eventually got there, got my support team. And one of the things uh, I remember reading uh, was um, if you wanted to achieve a VBAC or a vaginal birth after cesarean, 
Um, these are the things you want to do. You know, these are these things will really help you and increase your chances to achieve that. And one of those things was sign up for a hypnobirthing course, um, hire a doula, have a supportive husband or birth partner, and so on and so forth. So that's exactly what I did. I had a doula. I signed up for hypnobirthing, even though initially I was very skeptical, if I'm honest. I was like, what? Hippie hypnosis? What? <laughs> that's just not me. <laughs> Um, but I just decided to go ahead and sign up and I cannot tell you how, how amazed I was at the whole practice and how proud I was of myself for actually just pushing through and actually going through with the whole program and actually doing all the practice. And why that is, is because I did see the result. So funny thing is, I did end up in another cesarean. <laughs> Um, however, the difference was huge between my first two experiences and my last. So with my third cesarean section, it was actually out of necessity, medical necessity. Baby got stuck in a very awkward position. Uh, we've tried everything to get that baby out, you know, and I was 10 centimeters and pushing and baby just wouldn't budge. Okay. Um, I was also training to be a doula at the time. That's how much I kind of really went into this field, like full on 100%. Uh, so I was training when I was pregnant. And I knew, and I, so I knew a lot about birth. So I knew, I've really tried everything. And I've decided, you know, to, along with my team, that we're going to have a cesarean section because this baby does not look like it's going to go out um, the, the vaginal way. I labored for 30 hours, yes, 30 very long hours, uh, but it was the most calm, beautiful, supported uh, time I had probably spent in my life. Um, I labored with my first child. It was just about six or seven hours that ended up in an emergency C-section and it was horrendous. It was, I still have flashbacks of that experience. Uh, my third, it was so much longer, but it was so much calmer. I got to labor in the pool. I set up the environment. I, I, I put in everything that I took out of hypnobirthing from setting up the environment. Obviously, my husband took my, the classes with me, so he was super supportive. Having the doula, my doctor, everything was just perfect. And this is why this is very special to me, because I knew that after that experience, I felt like the queen of the night. I felt um, so motivated, so empowered. And honestly, three weeks after my cesarean, I was back in the hospital supporting another woman uh, with her VBAC uh, because my recovery was that quick. You know, I think recovery from C-section is all in the head. It's all in the mind because it took me forever with my first two. Um, and, and it was just beautiful. That's how excited I was um, about my birth experience. Okay, so having uh, spoken about all of that now, let us move on, okay? Uh, hello to anybody who has just joined us. We're gonna leave Q&A at the end. If you have any questions, drop them in um, and we'll get to them later. Okay, so why do we need to learn how to birth? Why do we need to learn how to birth? Okay. Well, um, I'm trying to see if any of you can actually, I can't see the chat, but I would have loved to ask you guys that question. Why do we need to learn how to birth? So many different reasons. Um, if you go back and ask your grandmother, maybe mother, but um, if you ask them, did you ever attend an antenatal class or hypnobirthing class? I'm pretty sure a lot of them will say no. And they'll probably tell you that, you know, who go, you know, why do I need to learn how to birth? It's the way our bodies are built. Um, and we just, you know, our bodies know what to do. We get pregnant, we have our babies and end of story. Uh, well, things have changed from back in the days, right? So there's been a lot of uh, things that came up, lots of changes. Um, one of the things that has come up is media. 
Okay, so how birth has been portrayed, okay, uh, in movie scenes. So I'm sure you've probably seen a birth scene or two over the last years where a woman goes into labor, her water breaks, breaks uh, probably in the middle of a party. And then she's suddenly in the hospital. She's on a stretcher on her back. She's screaming, she's sweating. She's cursing at everybody around her. She's cursing at her husband, especially. And then she's, um, you know, her legs are up on stirrups. And then you have the doctors and everyone shouting at her to push, push that baby out, right? Um, well, that image, that visual of birth actually sticks to a lot of people's minds, okay? It, it can stick there for a very, very long time without us even realizing that that's what our minds know about birth. Then you have people around you, friends, family, maybe your mother, uh, it could be anybody, but you will hear different stories of negative birth experiences and people aren't afraid to share those negative experiences, okay? So, then there's also uh, medical advancement. Uh, so today we have many more, um, you know, pain relief drugs, for example. Um, and so that aspect, you know, if you look at um, childbirth education classes and why they can be beneficial, is because well, not everybody knows how pain medications work, what the pros and cons are, and so it would be beneficial to understand. Uh, what options you have and what options may work for you, and so on. Um, and things, for example, like ultrasounds, okay? So ultrasounds can also um, be, you know, if you don't understand that, if you don't understand how they work or that they are not uh, super accurate all the time, if you go into birth and, and or, to your pregnancy or prenatal appointments, not understanding that, and you're told suddenly that your baby is super huge and it's just never gonna come out of you, you're gonna be very quick to schedule that C-section, right? So sometimes it's important to understand certain things about childbirth, about uh, pain relief, about all the things um, that you may come across or experience in a hospital setting. And you would get those from a, an antenatal program or a childbirth class. Um, so birth can easily move from a normal natural event to one that is medically managed. Okay. Um, if we didn't, um, if we didn't understand, um, how birth works, uh, today. Okay. So what happened was many women want to take back that control. They want to know what options they have. Um, and they want to feel supported, okay? So, I mean, there was a whole movement with a lot of um, obstetricians back in the days as well that kind of stood up and said, what is going on with birth? With birth? Why do we suddenly have such high intervention rates, C-section rates? Um, and that actually co coincided with when birth moved from the homes to the hospitals right, to being in a hospital setting, obviously, that's where they store all the medication. So there are obviously higher chances for a medicated birth. Not that those are right or wrong, but um, what tends to happen is a lot of the times, uh, you know, people, uh, instead of kind of really waiting, um, waiting it out or giving women their best chances, they can hurry up that process because uh, nobody wants to wait all day. So they can try to help you out by either pain relieving drugs or inducing drugs, okay? All right, so let us move on. All right, so when it comes to hypnobirthing, okay? Um, I'm sure you know that hypnobirthing has a lot to do with the mind, okay? Um, our mind is made of a part of it is made of the conscious mind and another part of it is made of the subconscious mind. Now, a big portion of our brain, if you look at the visual on your left with the iceberg, uh, the majority or the bulk of our mind is actually made of the subconscious mind. And amazingly, it actually uh, takes care of a lot of things such as beliefs, emotions, habits, values, imagination, etc. 
okay? Um, the conscious mind is uh, the critical mind. It's the mind we use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. It's that willpower, the long-term memory, the logical, okay? So it's the logical brain. Now, when it comes to birth, you must know that birth is very, uh, it's very instinctual. It's, um, it's, really, uh, it's really about exploring um, your inner beliefs about birth, okay? That all comes out in, child, in a childbirth uh, experience, okay? And, um, you know, so a lot of the practice and the, and the techniques and the tools that we use with hypnobirthing basically target the subconscious mind. It uses tools and techniques that, uh, that we know today is what the subconscious is responsible for. So remember when I initially asked you, you know, what kind of a birth experience do you want to have? That is an important question because you need to understand what your belief about childbirth is. Because if you see belief is there in the subconscious mind, you need to understand what you know about birth, what beliefs you have about birth, um, and you know, habits, for example, is the perfect um, example of why we use, uh, or why we say that everything you learn in hypnobirthing, you have to keep practicing. So I say there's no, there's no reason or there's no need for you to kind of practice any hypnobirthing techniques, such as breathing, for example, or relaxation techniques, uh, massage, whatever it is, if you're not going to continue using them you know, every other day on a daily basis, as much as you can. Because the idea is with practice, it turns into a habit and habits is where, you know, habits live in our subconscious mind. If you take the example of driving, right? So if some of you drive, you will know that in the beginning when we first learned how to drive, it was a very conscious effort which meant we were, you know, eyes on the road, over our shoulders. We were very meticulous on the whole process of driving, making sure, you know, kind of looking over our feet, where is the gas, where is the uh, brakes? It was a very conscious effort in our part. But what happens every time we go and practice driving, slowly, slowly with time, you realize, oh, I can get from point A to point B without even really thinking about it. You know, sometimes we drive ourselves home and you're like, oh, okay. Like you haven't really looked at every single turn and sign in the road, on the road, but also the act of driving, you know, with practice, we're not looking at our feet anymore. We could be multitasking in the car. Ask me, I'm always like shouting back at my kids in the car while I'm driving. Somehow the car's driving itself. And that's because, you know, that's the power of our subconscious mind. It has, it, it, um, it basically stored a learned skill out of habit because you have made a habit out of driving when you have been practicing so that it's stored it in your mind. And now you don't have to really consciously think about it. So again, some of the things when we go back to that question, your beliefs about birth, this is a list of different things you can actually sit down with yourself and, and ask, ask yourself, uh, what do I know about birth? You know, if I had just sat you down and said, well, if you can think of any scenario that has to do with, with birth, you know, without overthinking it, what would those be? What does birth look like to you in your mind, in your heart? You know, what does that look like? You know, there's some people who, is, who have never heard a birth story before from anybody. Maybe they've just never seen a birth scene uh, on a movie, in a movie. Uh, and then you have others who know a lot about birth, but all they know are all the traumatic birth stories. So it's important to know where you stand when it comes to your belief system, when it comes to birth. And then, of course, you take that and, and, and you start to think, how do I want my birth experience to look like? How do I deal with pain normally? You know, and that's a really important question. How do I usually or normally like to deal with pain? Do I have a bit of an understanding of my pain threshold? Um, 
you know, how, um, what tools do I generally use to treat pain when I have a headache, when uh, I hurt myself? So um, these are some of the things um, that I actually really like to delve into my birth coaching sessions, because it's really more about that kind of really knowing yourself. Uh, but definitely, uh, this is touched up, uh, upon in hypnobirthing practice as well. Okay, so then where does the hypnosis bit fit in? What do we know about hypnosis? Like I said, when I first um, signed up to a, this hypnobirthing course, I literally freaked out because I was like, I'm not being hypnotized. I don't even believe in hypnosis. What does this have to do with birth? And I know these are some very, very common comments and questions um, that I get asked all the time when it comes to hypnobirthing. I mean, honestly, sometimes the term, it's not, you know, the, my favorite. I do like to call the practice, uh, maybe a practice or a birthing program with deep relaxation skills, just so that it's easier to, to take in. Uh, so don't let the term kind of freak you out or anything like that. Hypnosis is really just learning tools and techniques to help you on a subconscious level. That's the only difference. Helping you on a subconscious level um, to be calm and relaxed and confident and empowered throughout your birthing experience. Um, it utilizes a natural state of subconscious deep relaxation that we go in and out of every day. If you uh, think about it, we actually experience uh, different um, moments of hypnosis or deep relaxation or uh, moments where we do things very subconsciously. Um, if you just take a minute and think about that, you know, ask yourself, what are some things that, you know, people or that I do on a day-to-day -day basis that are very subconscious? So we mentioned driving as one of them, right? But there's so many other things. Can you think with yourself? Can you think about some of those things? Um, breathing, obviously, we do very subconsciously. But um, things like, daydreaming. Daydreaming is a very interesting uh, experience, isn't it? You don't, you're kind of half there, half here, you're in like in la la land, but you're actually, you're still here. Uh, you might need to get nudged on the shoulder to kind of come out of it, to come out of that trance um, experience. Sleep, sometimes watching a movie. If you're really into what you're watching, you could be so, my, um, my husband all the time when he's watching football, you know, they're so into it. And you literally have to nudge them out of that, uh, that state of hypnosis, okay? Uh, so it's when a critical factor of the brain becomes sidetracked and we become more open to suggestions and our habits kick in. When used therapeutically, trance is a very good state for changing outdated beliefs and absorbing new learning. And this is why it's important. So, you know, a lot of the times we actually know quite a lot about birth. A lot of the times, it, you know, it's not very nice things about birth, okay, for a lot of us, but we might not actually be aware of it. And that's because, you know, when I first mentioned the birth scenes that we see in the movies, when we're watching a movie and we see a birth scene, you know, it might seem actually funny because that's the context it was put in, in the movie. You know, it's a, it's a comedy movie. She's screaming, she's sweating, she's cursing. It's all hilarious and we all laugh it off. But our subconscious remembers that scene and stores it in our mind to tell us this is what you know about birth. And then what happens? When it's time for us to go into labor or into birth, that is what our, that's all our mind knows. And so when we practice, um, you know, some, uh, to, when we use some tools from hypnobirthing, uh, such as affirmations, uh, listening to guided meditations, some of the relaxation techniques, the aim is really, one of the aims is to remove or to rid the subconscious mind of all those negative uh, thoughts, feelings, visuals around birth and replace them 
with positive images and visuals about birth. And this is why we always, um, in hypnobirthing, we watch really lovely positive birth videos. Uh, there are um, positive birth affirmations uh, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to replace those uh, thoughts that we may know or may not know exist in our mind. But just to make sure that all our mind really knows is a lot of positivity about birth because that most likely is what will play out for you on in, in your day. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about breathing. Okay, so as you know, uh, I mean, if you ask a lot of people, what is the one aspect of labor that is super important? If you ask me, I'll tell you the same, breathing. At least for me and for uh, a lot of my client, my doula clients or doula moms, uh, breathing for most of the time is what takes them through or like um, helps them through a long birth experience, okay? So breathing is key. The effect of stress in our breathing, okay? Um, if we, if we, um, experience labor using a lot of shallow breathing techniques. And that's basically doing a lot of the, the panting. Again, what you see in the movies, a lot of that, not very helpful. Okay. Not very helpful for many reasons. Okay. One being, well, you're really not taking in a lot of oxygen, right? So you want to take in as much oxygen as you can so that you can oxygenate your blood and your baby, right? You also want to, um, you want to de-stress, right? So when we pant, that can make us very anxious, right? It can make you anxious uh, versus some nice deep breath. It just feels good. It fills up your lungs. It helps relax us. It's like when you see somebody who's stressed, or anxious or afraid, the first thing you tell them is, okay, take a nice deep breath, take a deep breath. Uh, and that's because it actually works. It works to relax us. And so if you have a laboring mom and the first, this is the first time she's being told, okay, you need to relax, take some nice deep breaths, it's probably not gonna work because she's never practiced it before. And with everything going on and all the sensations she's feeling, she's going to be completely out of it. She's just going to go and do her shallow breathing. And so this is why it's great to start practicing, practice, practice, practice your breathing techniques during pregnancy so that when you are in labor, it's a subconscious effort. You have now created that lung capacity as well. Uh, and so that is what's going to help you uh, kind of continue uh, through, you know, a potentially long labor, okay? So then how do we breathe when we are calm? Okay, how do we breathe when we're calm? So there's something called a uh, belly breathing, okay? So some of you might be aware of that, of what uh, belly breathing is. And that is really, um, oops, sorry. So belly breathing is when you inhale, but your belly is sticking out, okay? And when you exhale, you actually bring back your belly in. So if you look at the visual here on the right, you'll see the lady with her hand um, right on top of her belly and the other hand at the bottom of her belly. This is a really nice way to just connect with your belly and feel that breath and it can really help you, uh, especially initially when you first start practicing your breathing to actually feel your belly come out and then going back in. Okay, uh, this is a great way to practice breathing. Okay, so remember, and if you wanna breathe with me, please go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do a few breaths. Um, I won't be really able to show you my belly, but when we inhale, the belly sticks out. And when we exhale, we try to draw our belly back, 
okay? Sometimes it might need a little bit of focus or practice because it's not the most natural way we breathe. So remember when you breathe in, belly sticks out. And when we breathe out, when we breathe in, belly out. When we breathe out, belly goes back in, okay? Now this is the standard kind of just uh, way of how to breathe, but there are several techniques of how you can breathe when you're having contractions, between contractions, um, and so that you can make the most out of it, the most out of your breaths, okay? Um, so one of the breathing techniques that uh, you learn in the Wise Hippo is called the bond and breathe, okay? Sometimes we refer to it as the five, four, three, two, one breathing. Okay, I want to try to play my, yeah, it's playing my little um, lotus flower here. Okay, this is a lovely visual to think about or to visualize when it comes to breathing. Okay, so the bond and breathe, what is that about? The bond and breathe or the five, four, three, two, one is really, um, is really, you know, has a lot to do with visualization. So, I want you to listen closely, okay? It can get a, feel a little bit complicated, but really it isn't. So what we do with the five, four, three, two, one is we take a nice breath in, remember with that belly out, we take a nice breath in through the nose, okay? And once we reach that point where we can't, you know, take in any more breath, we're going to visualize our body kind of split or divided into five different sections. So our head, this section up here is your five. And then the lower section is your four. And as you go further down, that's three. And then your lower legs is two. And finally, the section that's number one is your feet, okay? Now, it can sound a little bit crazy right now, but I promise you, if you start breathing, uh, if you start practicing with that visual, thinking about the five, four, three, two, one, as you exhale, and as you start to relax each of these sections, focusing on each section and relaxing it as you go along, um, it's actually a really great way for, way for whole body relaxation, okay? So you're really relaxing your whole body. At the same time, uh, it's a nice distraction. It's a nice distraction um, to, to visualize the different parts of your body being relaxed, okay? So if you have a moment, um, let's take a minute and just very quickly just see how that breath feels. If you can already start to visualize, relaxing, letting loose that section. Once you get to that section, just, you know, a lot of times we're actually like that without us even realizing. And only once people start to do the five, four, three, two, one, once they get to four, they're like, ah, oh. they relax their shoulders. We hold a lot of tension in our bodies. And especially when we're in labor, there's a lot of tension in our body. And using a technique such as the five, four, three, two, one can really help us release a lot of that tension. And you don't want any of that in your labor. And I'll actually speak about tension in just a bit. So uh, the five, four, three, two, one, I, let's practice. Let's, I'll give you a minute. I'm gonna do it with you. If you wanna do it in your own space, I just wanna make sure you get it. Um, so let's go. Uh, typically I'd have some music in the background, but for the lack of time, let's just go ahead and practice it for uh, a minute or so. Okay, make sure you're relaxed. Okay, or if you don't wanna practice it, you can just follow through, you can watch me. Um, and here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna remember to do my belly breath as well. At the same time, I'm visualizing my five, four, three, two, one, okay? Okay, here we go.
Okay. So we just did three nice breaths over there. I already feel so relaxed. Um, and this is the beauty of it. Honestly, five, four, three, two, one, I use it and I'm not pregnant. So it's for general relaxation as well for any person, pregnant or not. And it just, you know, out of habit because I've used it so often, I use it anytime I just want to relax. I've had a long day, it's stressful, I have three kids. So I do use it quite often, okay? Um, um, and then some people ask, how long does the breath need to be? Well, uh, I would say take a shorter breath in. So don't try not to make your inner breath or your inhale super long. So inhale as much as you can, but make sure you have a longer exhale out. The also, also, the reason we inhale through our nose is because our nose is narrower, so you don't gulp in large amounts of air all at once. And that can help you kind of sustain that, that breath. So breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth, okay? I'd love for you to go back and practice uh, the bond and breathe, five, four, three, two, one, um, as much as possible, it will really, really help you through um, during your labor or during pregnancy, just for general relaxation or when you're stressed or even when you're driving and stuck in traffic, like it is really helpful. I promise you that. Okay. Um, and you can use this breath anytime during labor, early labor, active labor, whenever you feel you need to catch your breath and you really need to focus. This would be a great time to use. Okay. Okay, let's move on. I really, uh, I think this is a really interesting uh, quote um, by Grantley Dick Reed, who's a physician. You might have come across his one of his books, Childbirth Without Fear. It's an excellent book. I highly recommend it. Um, recommend that you read it. So this is a quote that he says, there is no physiological function in the body that gives rise to pain in the normal course of health. In no other animal species is the process of birth apparently associated with any suffering, pain, or agony, except where pathology exists or in an unnatural state such as captivity. Maybe a lot to take in. Um, but the interesting thing about Grantley Dick Reed, so he's a physician. Uh, from a long time ago. And um, one of the experiences he had, because he was delivering um, or supporting women to have their babies, uh, one of the experiences he had was when a woman uh, refused to take any pain relief medication back in the days. And he's like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah. You know, she was pretty surprised because she's like, yeah, I mean, this is a natural process, right? Like, why would I need that? So she went ahead, labored, had her baby, everything was fine. She seemed very chill during her whole experience. And he asked her, how did you do that? Did you not feel any pain? And it was the lady's response that um, made him really think about what just happened. Um, and her response to him was, what do you mean pain? I didn't actually feel any pain. Oh, was it supposed to hurt, doctor? So that was her response that stuck with him for years and he decided to kind of look into that and understand why some people feel pain and some people don't like this woman don't actually experience any pain um, during childbirth. And this is when Grantha de Creed came up with this concept of the fear, tension, pain. The fear, tension, pain cycle is, um, is, very uh, deeply rooted in hypnobirthing practice. And what it really just says is that if we go into labor carrying a lot of fear, okay, so whether that's conscious or subconscious, whether we know we're afraid of childbirth or a hospital setting or whatever it is, or whether we don't know because it's subconscious fear that we have, if we do carry that, it is going to translate into tension in our body, in our mind and in our body. Um, and it's going to cause a lot of, you know, it's almost like a, in our body, like cramping, you know, that 
Cramping when it comes to labor obviously translates into contractions or painful contractions. And so you have the fear, tension, pain cycle. Um, if you go back and remove the fear from the equation, then the idea is that you won't get to experience tension. And if you don't have tension, you don't experience pain. And that is really what we try to do with hypnobirthing is use tools and techniques that will remove um, the fear, uh, that will remove the tension. And this is why a lot of the times people say, childbirth wasn't painful uh, when they've used hypnobirthing techniques. Uh, they do feel a lot of, um, um, you know, they, they feel a lot of, uh, how, how do I call it? It's just um, very powerful sensations, very intense. So uh, that's how I like to des describe my labor experience. It was very intense, but it wasn't really painful. Okay. So um, there are lots of tools to uh, work on, on how you can remove that fear from this equation so that you can have a very comfortable and confident labor experience. Okay, I want to, uh, I also just want to play this video for you. Okay, I think it's time we play a little video. Let's see. So remember when we spoke about the media? Uh, so I'm just going to play it without saying much. Is there any such thing as a pain-free birth? The supermodel Giselle Bündchen, she had one. She says popping out of some Benjamin last year didn't hurt at all. The 29-year-old used yoga and meditated instead. When she felt a contraction coming, she, she, could, she simply told herself, this is just the baby closer to coming out rather than noticing any pain. Dr. Grantly Dick Reed said in his classic tome, Childbirth Without Fear, he argued that much of the pain of having a baby is in your mind, girls. And, yeah, but Nadia, you share that belief, don't you? Okay, right, okay. I have very strong um, beliefs on this. I had both my babies at home. My first baby, it was almost three days. I thought I was going to die. The pain was beyond anything anyone had ever told me. And I, 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 I considered myself a survivor of torture. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> My second birth, I did everything Giselle did. I had hypnobirthing. I read every book. I, 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 I thought about every contraction as being bringing my baby closer. I, I, I said open about five million times. I think she did the same. Open! <laughs> <laughs> Instead of going, oh, you can't, you can't, you can't. Okay, okay, when you do okay. that, all okay. the muscles shut down. The it's like the fear and you know the fear and flight thing. Like yeah. if you're very frightened, all the blood that you need in your body goes to where it need where you need to run. And right. basically, the the womb of the uterus seizes. So I did it the other way, and no, I didn't no. push. I, I breathe, they say, you breathe baby out. And I did it. And I had my... No own pain relief at all? No pain relief. I had no pain relief either time. But the second time, I could have had a baby a week later the second time because I was so empowered. My baby came out, she landed on the sitting room floor and she just went <laughs> like that. The first baby screamed and screamed. She, she'd been through hell, the first one. And I passionately believe it was my fear. My fear that stopped her being able to come out. Because I just closed my legs and said, no, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Forgive me for jumping in. Time short. Let's find out whether any of you have enjoyed a pain-free birth. Doesn't size come into it, Kirsty? I think size does matter. We have uh, Tamara on line three. Morning, Tamara. Good morning. Can I just say, Nadia, thank you so much. You have now just changed so many women's lives by talking about hypnobirthing. Oh. Because it absolutely 100% works. Hang on, let and, me just finish and, and my mung bean whole wheat sandwich. I'll be right with you. It's truly the most amazing way to birth. It really is, isn't it? I mean, I am evangelical about it. How big was your baby? My, my baby was just over nine and a half pounds and I also breathed my baby out and I had a smile on my face and I just wanted to do it again the next day. I that, I no. The I, I, I that, that's true. Now, that's not, unnatural. That's unnatural. Tomorrow, was this your first? No, this is my second. I had a very, very traumatic first oh, birth no, and I booked a C-section as soon as I thought, as soon as I found out I was pregnant second time around. And I stumbled across hypnobirthing purely by chance at 36 weeks pregnant. And it just changed my life. 
Well, well, well. Um, I can't believe you said you wanted to do it again the next day oh, tomorrow. I did. Right? I did. I did, you did because didn't... of this incredible empowerment. You know, it, it really is the best high of your life. Okay. So there is, well, apart from the fact that he's very sarcastic, at least there's a positive story that was um, in that interview that she shared. And it's so true. It's really, really true. Um, you know, that empowerment bit, that feeling, that empowerment, like I said, no matter what kind of a birth experience you end up having, um, you know, it's, it's the process. It's really about the process and the tools and the techniques that you use and that support that you have that can really make or break your experience, okay? And so then you ask yourself, well, then how do I get rid of all that fear and all that tension um, during my pregnancy and birth? Um, so a relaxed environment, okay, is key. Okay, relaxed environment and techniques. And I'll, and I'll take you through some of those, okay? Um, what, I mean, a relaxed environment can mean something different from person to person as well. You know, I've had moms who uh, actually like the lights being on. Um, I've had uh, women who wanted, I've had a woman who wanted all her family with her in the birth room. She wanted her aunt, her grandmother, her sister-in-law, uh, her two, her two sisters, her husband, myself as her doula. Then there was a doctor, the midwife. I think there were a total of 11 people in that birth room, but that's the environment she envisioned for herself and it worked great for her. Um, and so you need to think about that. What is a relaxing environment to you? Uh, I will not go into all the details of hormones, but hormones also, um, that we produce during child during labor super important. So things like a relaxed environment will increase the levels of all the good hormones we want to produce like oxytocin and um, endorphins, our feel good hormones. Okay. And that is why we use relaxation techniques or having a relaxed environment. Uh, also to decrease levels of the not so great hormones like adrenaline that we may produce out of fear, because that can actually slow down the process of birth and slow down labor. A supportive birth team, again, super, super important. There's no point in you practicing all of, um, you know, practicing hypnobirthing techniques. You have everything going for you, but then you somehow end up with a doctor who doesn't believe in you, doesn't believe in your options or your, um, in your choices. You have a husband who is going to be there with you, but is so out of it, uh, doesn't know what to do, which is why um, with hypnobirthing, we actually focus a lot on birth partner support. So there's a whole section actually uh, in the full program with how the birth partner can support the laboring woman or his wife during the whole process, because it's, it's, a it's team effort. And that support, um, that birth team needs to be supportive or they better just not be there at all, right? Um, and then obviously that also means a midwife, a doula, if you want to have one. So you really need to think about that birth team, the people that you feel you can trust and be vulnerable around, uh, around you. That's what you want. Okay. Uh, natural comfort measures that we'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, and then being informed and taking control. So, it, you know, when I sh shared my third birth experience for me, that was super important. I was so informed. Um, I had all the information. And if I didn't know something, I made sure to ask, again, a tool that I've learned in hypnobirthing, asking the right questions, uh, decision-making tools as well. Um, and then I just felt like I was in control. You know, the, the C-section this time around wasn't done to me as it was in my first two. In fact, it was almost my decision when I said, you know what, this is what we're going to do. It gives you so much empowerment to feel like you're in control of the birth outcome. Uh, training your mind to think positively about birth. And this is, of course, where the affirmations uh, come into play, the guided meditations and things like that. Because remember, we need to retrain our mind or our subconscious mind to start thinking positively about birth. Okay. So some natural comfort measures um, that, we, that I'd like to go through. Water is my favorite comfort measure. Um, or, or comfort tool. Now, of course, these are natural techniques I'm talking about. We're not talking um, uh, drugs or medication. So if you have the opportunity 
um, in the hospital that you're going to be birthing in where they have a tub, a labor, a laboring tub or labor pool, then I will tell you, please take advantage of it. Uh, if you can, and if you feel comfortable doing so, because labor has tons of benefits, you know, laboring in the water has tons and tons of benefits, both for you and the baby. You don't necessarily have to birth in the water, but you know, some people choose to do that. I've supported several water births and it's the most incredible thing you could ever see. I've also labored in water um, and, and it's super relaxing, honestly. That's where you know those endorphins, those feel-good hormones are on the rise. Um, and it's, you know, endorphins are natural body pain relief. Okay. Um, if you don't have access to a pool in, in, in the hospital you're gonna birth in, make use of the shower. Warm showers. Again, you know, every time we go for a warm shower or a jacuzzi or sauna or any of that stuff we actually feel really relaxed and comfortable, right? And that's again, because due to the endorphins that our bodies produce. So water is super amazing during labor and birth. Aromatherapy, so you wanna use uh, some essential oils. Um, there's a whole uh, range of aromatherapy essential oils that you can use and that play different roles uh, in labor. So some are more relaxing, some, um, some kind of help progress labor and get your, um, you know, the uh, endorphins and the oxytocins on, on the rise. So clara sage and things like that. Uh, but it also depends on what relaxes you and makes you feel comfortable. So a nice little diffuser, something I always carry in my doula bag, a diffuser, fill up that room with some nice relaxing aromatherapy scents that you prefer, that you like, and bring that with you um, into, the, into, your, into the labor room. Massage touch tens. Touch is, again, a very powerful tool. Uh, in hypnobirthing practice, uh, in the program I teach, we, we learn and we practice massage techniques. It's uh, often called a light touch massage. And again, the idea is to get those endorphins produced uh, because that's gonna help you as a, as a natural pain relief. Uh, you have things as this, the TENS machine. I'm not sure how familiar you are, but this is what a TENS machine looks like. Comes with several buttons that you can control. And at the other side of it, it comes with uh, sort of these uh, patches, stickers uh, that you would stick on different parts of your body. And it releases um, like electrical impulses. You do set the intensity on your, uh, on your device, uh, depending on what feels good for you. And that uh, basically starts to produce endorphins and it can be a great distraction. A lot of my mamas love to use the TENS machine because it really distracts them from the sensations of labor. Music and affirmations, again, remember that is your space. So if you want to have music playing around, uh, with hypnobirthing, you typically have a bunch of uh, deep relaxation or med guided meditation tracks. So a lot of women like to play those in, in the birth room that helps kind of motivate them, keeps, you know, gets them going, relaxes them. Um, but also you're not really only subjected to that. If you have any specific uh, music that you prefer, or, you know, I always say create your playlist and bring it with you. I've had a mom who wanted to only listen to her national anthem. She was a very patriotic lady, but that's, that is what worked for her. And I remember holding her phone on a YouTube video of a performer in an orchestra performing the national anthem. So whatever works for you, bring it along. Remember, you can really personalize your, your birthing space. And that's super, I cannot tell you how important that is. Uh, and then of course, breathing. And we practiced one breathing technique today. But of course, there are several more that, that can really help you as well uh, for you to use during, um, you know, between contractions, for example, and also obviously during the pushing phase or as you breathe your baby down. Support, I cannot stress enough the, um, the importance of support. Uh, you know, with COVID right now, that can be a little bit limited to the number of people you can have with you in the room. You know, here sometimes hospitals will only accept one birthing person 
uh, or birthing support person or two, depending. And so remember, you have options. And I would say, you know, pick the person or two that you feel will support you the best, you know, the best way possible that makes, um, that you think will make your experience the most special, the most relaxing, the most comfortable, uh, no matter who it is. You know, I've had moms choose me over their husbands <laughs> because the hospital only allowed one support person. You know, we don't take it personally, honestly, but it's that important. It's when women realize and understand that, that it's, you know, you just need to be selfish sometimes. Who do you really want with you in the birthing space? Um, make sure you choose a, a supportive doctor. You go through all your preferences with your doctor prenatally so that you're not surprised during labor and birth, okay? So you make sure they understand how you want uh, them to support you, okay? Um, oh, that already played. I wanna play, I wanna end this with a, a birth video. So just because of lack of time, I'm gonna fast forward this uh, just a little bit. Um, so this is a birth video, okay? This woman is almost gonna give birth. Um, I think she's at, was it seven centimeters or, uh, yeah, she's very close to birth. I'm just gonna go ahead and play it. Uh, and it is a beautiful birth video, very relaxed. She's obviously practiced hypnobirthing. So I just wanna give you an idea of what birth can potentially look like when you use the right relaxation um, techniques, tools and techniques. <laughs> It is very important to feel safe and comfortable in the environment that we choose to birth our babies in. Creating an environment with dim lighting and privacy is what was important to Sophie. Your wise hippobirthing instructor will discuss the importance of the birthing environment with you. Here we can see Sophie's husband trying to create a more relaxing environment by blocking out the bright light. We like to think of birthing partners as the protectors of the birthing environment. A very important role indeed.
the last minute, if you use the right phrases and things, you can get hypnosis going. It is fantastic. Of course, it's better when you've been working at it for more. Yeah, so what happens now is we don't do anything to interfere with a natural process, unless, of course, the pool fills with a large amount of blood and then it obviously needs interfering with. So we wait for the natural process of the cord to stop. And it will be a long time because water is like the moon. So to keep on pumping, sometimes for half an hour. And at that point, you can clamp it up the cord. But the placenta might come out before then, which is fine. Whoops, whoops. Ah! What just happened? Sorry about that. Let me oh, try to get to where we stopped. I think we were. And at that yeah. point, she's so alert, isn't she? Hello, James. <laughs> there was absolutely no sign of you any there was no pushing at all you just like were so focused you had your eyes closed and you were just breathing down that's fantastic you were just so in, you were in your zone wasn't she she was in her zone in a special place yeah i feel really good what do you think about the experience i thought it was lovely it was lovely it was lovely, no comparison to last time. Doesn't that just make you get excited? I remember how exciting um, I, you know, I felt watching this and then actually seeing women experience that in childbirth uh, because they, you know, have practiced tools and techniques to help them get there. Uh, it is so empowering. I mean, you could see her reaction. That's the first thing she said. She said, I did it. I did it. <laughs> like she achieved something. So that is truly possible uh, with practice, using the right tools and techniques. Because uh, birth doesn't have to be scary. Birth can be a beautiful experience um, if just um, if we work towards it, right? If we work towards the right uh, kind of techniques and the tools and having the right support, it really, really is. So, um, so this really summarizes uh, a lot of what we've spoken about today. Um, let your body do what it's designed to do. You know, um, with all the misconceptions a lot of people say about hypnobirthing, my response to that is always, um, you know, when hypnobirthing is considered hippie practice, I will say, well, you know what? Hypnobirthing is actually just taking birth back to the basics. It's really allowing, it's really allowing the body to do what it was designed to do. That's all we were doing. We're actually really stripping away a lot of unnecessary interventions that we are surrounded with today. I mean, of course, sometimes these interventions can be life-saving, right? So C-sections can be life-saving. Sometimes they're super necessary and we're super thankful for the medical providers that can do that for us. But it then becomes a problem when a lot of the interventions are unnecessary for various different reasons. And so we do need to take it upon ourselves to be informed, to, um, you know, to have the support that we need uh, and to really believe in ourselves, in our bodies, abilities, capabilities, uh, and to train ourselves the best way possible to achieve that birth experience, that positive birth experience. So I wanted to end this by, uh, I don't know how clearly you can see this, but uh, if you're interested to have an idea of what the course content is of, of, of actually taking a full hypnobirthing course, which is actually split into four different classes, um, this is the way it's formatted. Uh, and by the way, I personally, with my classes, I change up my content so often. And that's because I feel, you know, just over the last five years I've been teaching, there's just so many new experiences I come across, new 
you know, material and new text and new um, information. And that I always want to add as much as I can possibly fit in the 12 hours of teaching a hypnobirthing course. Um, and uh, also, you know, the program itself does not come with, you know, what to expect in the hospital, some of the more antenatal things. And so I, I add a lot of my own content because I realize how important it is for women to, you know, especially with first time births to understand what to expect in hospital, um, you know, what are all the different uh, procedures that they may come across, what can they uh, refuse or accept, you know, decline or accept in terms of procedures and things like that. With every class, there's a lovely birth video like the one we've just seen today uh, as well to end the, the session on a, on a very positive note. So birth video, uh, deep relaxation session. So we do a guided meditation that's really just filled with positive affirmations. Remember, it's about storing that you know, image of a positive birth in our subconscious mind. And then we do, uh, we talk a lot about the physiology of birth, birth positions, labor and birth positions, which we also actually practice in class, um, and then the birth partner and how they can support and so on. So all this is all this information is actually on my website if you wanted to um, look into it. If you are ready to or want to have a think about actually signing up for a hypnobirthing course, you do get a bunch of things. You actually get access to your own portal uh, from the Wise Hippo website that contains about a huge video library, which is amazing, that has about you know, a lot of these videos and a lot of informational videos uh, and a breastfeeding training video as well. There are about 90 of them that is all included. Uh, I also offer uh, weekly recap emails with different resources that can really help you uh, with your pregnancy and labor and birth uh, journey. And then you're also invited to a private WhatsApp group and the YSIPO group, uh, just to really, you know, it's all about that support. And I would want to be able to support you as much as possible. And then you do get a workbook. It's a, an ebook. So it's a flip book that automatically you get as well as soon as uh, you sign up if you decide to, um, which basically covers the sessions, um, the four classes, but not in as much detail as I would uh, probably cover in class. Okay, so if you are interested, I would love to be part of your birthing journey. I definitely go into so much more detail. Um, obviously, an hour and a half is not enough. Uh, a hypnobirthing program that I teach is 12 hours. Uh, split into four classes and my next and last course of 2020 um, is on December, starts December 7th. So that's next Monday, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Dubai time or UAE time. Ideally, you should be around 20 to 34 weeks pregnant. However, I mean, this is just a loose guide. I've had many people start much earlier on and I have people start, you know, later about 35 or 36 weeks, as long as you're comfortable um, you know, to, to start the classes, it's totally fine. But, you know, obviously, you know, people have different preferences. Some people just want to spend more time practicing and some people catch up very quickly when they start later. Um, this is the link to the website, bellybabymom.com slash hypnobirthing. And you'll find much more details about what, you know, not much more, but you'll find a lot of detail about what hypnobirthing is uh, and to check if it's for you. Uh, so uh, this is for all of you lovely ladies who've joined me today. I am offering a 500 dirhams off for you because you have joined today. Uh, please take a screen grab if you can or write this code down. If you do decide over the next couple of days that you wanted to sign up for the four week program, I would love for you to email me on Shireen and Belly Baby Mom quoting this quote Co co quoting this code so I know you've come from the webinar uh, and it does expire in December 2nd on National Day UAE National Day so um, yeah you get 500 germs off from the, from the program I uh, really enjoyed doing this even though uh, it wasn't interactive I hope you've enjoyed this because I actually just wanted to pass off as much information as I could possibly fit in, in an hour and a half. And I knew by keeping it very interactive, uh, we were going to, you know, have less time 
um, sharing information with you. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope it was not an information overload for you. Um, I'm just going to disconnect. Okay, I've disconnected that. All right.